counterculture is a movement of neophiles, of people who want new things to be happening and to see what happens. What happens if we do this? What happens if we play that? What happens if we take this? What happens? I was working as a university lecturer and I was teaching creative writing. And so one day I suddenly realised I had to write this book and it was caused by my students' t-shirts. Um, one of them was a lass wearing a Ramones t-shirt and I said, oh, I saw the Ramones and she went, are they a band? We do what we want to do and we're happy doing this. Honestly, a couple of days later, a student, because I was a university lecturer, wearing a CND shirt with the, the P symbol on and I went, yeah, oh, CND, like, no, I mean. <laughs> and he said, what? And he did not know what the symbol represented. He didn't know that there was such thing as CND. And, and whenever I talk to my students, uh, uh, I mean, one of them said to me, Ian, you know the Second World War? I went, yeah. He said, does that mean there was a First World War? Right, regimental questions. Pay attention, or the whole squad. Which is odd, because what they know about, if they know any history, is generals and wars and... Broadsword calling Danny Boy. No, it's, it's like we live in the ruins, somehow, of a civilization, where people no longer know what it is. I wanted to s tell them the story of what this this culture had been. And this has become a secret history, a forgotten history. A, a, a history in which their parents and grandparents participated, after all. So I, that's what made me want to tell this story with some urgency. The late 60s, in, in popular cultural terms, you have things like Thunderclap Newman at number one, something in the air. The, the revolution is coming. coming out onto the streets, the world is going to change. John and Yoko in bed for peace. This is an alternative to violence. And this, you've got to remember, this is on BBC One. You know, this is on the six o'clock news. This is on top of the pops. This isn't some, you know, thing that's hidden in a little corner of the internet. This is something that families would gather around the TV to watch. I was allowed to stay up on Boxing Day to watch the Magical Mystery Tour by the Beatles. The whole of which is filmed using LSD. Very good LSD. Owsley Acid imported in film canisters from America. It's unthinkable now that, you know, whoever the major popular cultural figures of our time would be, the Cardassians, what, are the Cardassians going to go to bed for peace? They would go to bed for money. I'm going to make a tutorial right now. Is Ed Sheeran going to suddenly make a film on acid? He's not, is he? <laughs> so those things were, were part of our daily life. And as growing up as kids, we wanted that. We wanted to be able to go out and see loads of egg men and walruses wandering about. You know, we, we kind of expected that. We, we wanted, we, we actively expected the revolution to be coming. I, th I think young people in particular need to know about this. My parents really disapproved of me because I took drugs and played in bands. I disapprove of young people because they don't take drugs and they don't play in bands. They're, they're really square. If you take the hippies, for example, they were the real thing. We live in a world of teetotalers and hard-working young people sitting at computers. That is not how it's supposed to be. When you're young, you're supposed to play. The hippies were making a world where they were pushing play uh, as far into adulthood as they could. These are the people who, in their thousands, went to India. In their hundreds of thousands, looked again at the idea of spirituality, for example, for the first time, really challenged the, the hegemony of Christian thought for the first time, who threw away the idea of dressing like your parents, because what they were after, they wanted to change their minds. They wanted their minds to be different.
The hippies are welcoming of multicultural Britain. The hippies are dancing, after all, to soul music and to reggae music. The, the, the hippies are expecting a world made of love, however stupid it might sound. Also, the hippiedom is one of the first moments where women turned round and said, I don't think so, son. You, you could argue, in fact, it's the roots of political correctness, but in a good way. Political correctness is a good thing, right? We don't call people names. We want everybody to be equal. Is that you, Sambo? <laughs> hey, Eddie, do you mind? I'm in the middle of a phone call. I had the telephone first, and white takes precedence over black. The book starts in 1956, sort of, <coughs> and ends in 1994. This is battered Budapest under the brutal Russian boot. As Egypt plans to abrogate her treaty with Britain, this is my bed, love me. I started in 1956 because that's the Soviet invasion of Hungary, the failed British invasion of Suez, and the release of Heartbreak Hotel on RCA Victor by Elvis Presley. Those are my three inciting incidents. And I finish in 1994, and, and really I, 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 I talk about uh, the Criminal Justice Act 1994. I'll get the kids excited. And, and, and why the Criminal Justice Act put a full stop, and, and why the energy had run out of the idea of a unified counterculture, and why I think the media looked away from it as well. <laughs> That world continued. The world of the neophobe continued to assert itself. That's why this book's important, because I'm writing about culture, which we mustn't forget. Young people were out making culture. That's the point of punk. It was cheap, it was easy, go and do it. That's the point. As hippie culture started to get stale, which it did in the 70s, it renewed itself. Punk isn't totally opposed to the hippies, it's an outgrowth of it. It's a remembering of what was important in 1967 and in particular 1968. So it managed to reinvent itself in pursuit of authenticity and in pursuit of what is new. It simply is not going to work. Our society, it seems to me, isn't interested in what is new, but is interested in what is safe. I was just slightly too young to be a full-on hippie, but I, I loved it. I loved the Beatles. I loved that culture. And, and when I was growing up, I, you know, I wanted to be in that culture, but my big stroke of luck was when I was 18. It got to be punk rock. So I was a punk rocker and then I was playing in bands in the 80s and I took loads of drugs and I had loads of sex and rock and roll was my world and I lived in caravans and I lived in squats and at the end of it, I'm someone's granddad drinking tea by the fire. Because I want to tell these stories. I want to tell this story to my grandchildren, in the way my granddad told me stories about the war, I want to say, let me tell you children about the time when we were off our tits on acid living in, in mid Wales. It seems to me an important story to tell to young people, and that's why I wrote the book. This book is really important because we mustn't abandon history to the people who will tell you the history of this country is war and Churchill and generals and kings, the history of this country is the people who live here. And, and in the period that I'm writing about, 1956 to 1994, the young people of this country stepped up to it. They made history. They wanted to make the world a better place. What could be more important than that?